All right, we are back in business on uh, this uh, part of the hotline this morning, talking with, uh, we heard from Sarah Poet, the soprano. Sarah, Sarah is, I don't know if we mentioned this, a senior music major. She's from St. Joseph. And David Welter is with us now. David is a junior music major from St. Joseph. And David won the, uh, uh, won another one of these, uh, one of the two competitions, or two competitions for two seats with the orchestra, or two places with the orchestra. And David's a trombonist. And so welcome, David. Good to have you here. Good to be here. So, uh, Chris, tell us why David won a spot in this. Uh, well, David is going to perform a piece by Rimsky-Korsakov for the Concerto for Trombone. And interestingly enough, when it was first entered, at first I was very confused because there is no concerto for trombone with orchestral accompaniment, right? Rimsky-Korsakov originally wrote it for just piano and trombone, I believe. And then over time it was transcribed for wind band, uh, particularly in the UK. Is that what you mentioned to me, David? Yeah, there was an arrangement for brass band in the UK. Yeah, and then I, through some investigation, found an orchestration. So with his, with his applied instructor's help, Dr. Harrelson helped me uh, sort of navigate that a little bit. We have an orchestral arrangement ready to go for this trombone concerto. So in that way, it's sort of a first for St. Joe to hear this transcription with trombone and orchestra. Okay, so this maybe is it would be would be saying too much to say that it's kind of like a world premiere of this uh, piece. Uh, maybe in this fashion. Uh, well, I think I th well I don't know that we could call it a world premiere. We would need a time machine for that. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely something unique and really unique uh, because I don't this piece doesn't get performed often. I think because it's a little bit unknown the transcriptions exist mm -hmm. but it's a really nice concerto it's broken up into three larger sections in true concerto fashion it's fast playing in the middle section is the lyrical song section and then it ends with you know a fast sort of dance like uh, section as well David what is it you like about this concerto that you chose it well uh, it was sort of a decision between my instructor and I to pick this one. We kind of had a couple of pieces that we were looking at. Um, I've been working on this piece for about a year now, so it's it's nice to, you know, finally unveil it on a more grand scale than just a brass studio recital. But uh, I started playing through it and listened to a couple of recordings, and I thought, this it really fits with how I play, I think. It's, it has some very technical parts in it and technique is kind of more my strong suit than anything. And uh, there are a couple of lyrical spots and the cadenzas kind of allow for more expression. It's, it's kind of a, just a nice little mishmash of all sorts of things that appeal to me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, there was a lot of room for development when I, <clears throat> when I started playing it. I think, I think that it's just an overall great piece for someone like me. What do you think about uh, the trombone as a concerto instrument? We see we, mm. it's a very important section uh, instrument. It, it uh, carries the, the foundation for yeah. much of orchestration in a, in, a, in a symphony setting. But as a concerto instrument, it is, it's an expressive instrument. I wonder why there hasn't been or hasn't been more written for it as a concerto type instrument. Uh, I'd like to hear both of you talk about this. Sure. Yeah, I um, huh, That's a really good question. Actually, it's it's um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going back to as as a viola player. You know, if you're in competition in a concerto competition, I mean, unless you are an amazing viola player, you're not getting chosen. And I think it's because it's a really limited rep solo repertoire with orchestra. And so I'm wondering, is there a limited solo repertoire with trombone and orchestra? Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that that's correct. Probably the because case. Because usually when you think of like some kind of concerto, you're thinking oboe, clarinet, 
or strings, right. something more Baroque or right. classical. Right. Um, I think trombone concertos and more like trombone centered pieces have only become like really popular in the last couple centuries. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with the that. trombone wasn't invented during the Baroque period and wasn't really present for most of the classical period. So, it, uh, compared to trumpet and French horn, it's a more right. recent instrument. Mozart was the first one to feature a trombone in a in an orchestral work in his Requiem. Uh, that the tuba mira movement opens with uh, alto trombone. Or I'm sorry, tenor trombone uh, solo at the beginning and that was the first time in history that a composer decided to do that the trombone uh, throughout history starts with the sack button and then uh, evolves into the trombone that we know it now uh, it's always been present and did you know that the trombone typically uh, is associated with the heavenly realms did you know uh, that I did not know that no pressure David <laughs> You've got the wrong guy. The, he the, he <laughs> <laughs> the heavenly realms. So, uh, how do you, how do you look at your own instrument? The, the, it is a slide trombone, not a valve trombone, right? Right. Okay. When you, do you look at this as a, uh, as a jazz instrument, a band instrument, or do you think of it in orchestral terms? I kind of think of it as a jack of all trades instrument. Mm because uh, it can play with orchestra it can play in a band setting or jazz band it's it it's a very versatile instrument mm -hmm. yeah is there a particular <clears throat> genre that you like the best um i i gotta say brass band is up there is one of my favorite sort of ensembles to play in jazz is fun even though i haven't really had much experience with it mm-hmm just got done playing a jazz concert last night too where i soloed so all right it was well, very fun improvised yeah great now is <laughs> I, that would be i would think I, i'm not going to say frightening uh because i'm not a musician but um the idea that you've got a an impro improv improvised part coming up here did you have any trepidation about that? Not really, because for the most part with jazz soloing, there's kind of a, I, I'd call it like a data bank of sort of ideas mm -hmm. that you have in your head. And once, <clears throat> when, when you're put on the spot, it's kind of up to you to know if you have that in your head, you can kind of use that and manipulate it to create an original sounding solo by using a bunch of, already pre-existing sort of melodic lines mm -hmm. little uh like standard sayings or something right yeah, yeah. okay all right so so you're you feel good about playing it no matter what you're what you're in you, what is it about the trombone itself how did you pick that as an back when you started your your band career or whatever it might have been how did you pick trombone well, it all starts with my dad, John Welter, who's listening right now. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was a trombone player th through his high school and college career, and that was that was kind of inspiring to me because you know, as as a young as a young kid, y you look up to your parents, and I have never stopped looking up to him and my mom as well. Um, and I thought I, I want to play trombone. Um, I want to I want to do what he did and according to my grandma I said something along the lines of I want to play I want to be exactly like my dad but better and so I started trombone in fifth grade this was almost 10 years ago that's when I started doing trombone I picked it mainly because I was inspired by my dad's work but then as time went on I just kind of started to fall in love with the instrument and thought I made the right choice Instead of doing something like trumpet or tuba, I made the right choice by doing trombone. It's something that fits me. Does it feel like your voice? Yes. I feel like I can express words better through nonverbal means with a trombone rather mm -hmm. than trying to talk. Mm -hmm. Comes out very jumbled when I try to talk. Oh, but, you're doing all right. <laughs> but on the trombone, it's very clear. Uh -huh. Nice. What would you like to do with this ability with the trombone? Are you going to be a teacher? Would you like to be a performer or, or both? 
Well, I would like to do both, but uh, it's more leaning towards being a music teacher. Just, my dad is a music teacher, and well, that continues the inspiration part there. I am, I'm very set on being a music teacher. That's great. All right. I think music education is a great, uh, a great avenue. It's a great uh, career to follow. Uh, but like you said, you can always perform at any time, anywhere, you know, just looking for the opportunities. Chris, let's talk about the rest of the concert on Saturday night. Sure. You also have a, 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 a nice uh, symphony, perform uh, symphony piece here by Tchaikovsky. Yeah, we uh, went ahead and programmed Tchaikovsky's second symphony, which has in the past been called the Little Russian. Uh, but we are actually making that more accurate this time. Since the whole symphony uses Ukrainian folk songs, uh, we're calling it Tchaikovsky Symphony No. 2, the Ukrainian. Uh, that's more accurate. Uh, and plus, Little Russian is, is not uh, historically nice. Uh, to refer to that region as Little Russia has not been. And this came from a friend of mine who's Ukrainian. He said, you should consider. And I thought, well, that makes sense. But it's kind of nice, actually. I know that we're, we're wrapping up soon. The Rimsky-Korsakov will be first on the program. And then we'll do the, the aria from Gilbert and Sullivan and then end with the symphony. Now, Rimsky-Korsakov studied in a conservatory in Moscow and had a clear vision of trying to find the Russian sound for, you know, uh, his culture. Tchaikovsky went to the other conservatory in St. Petersburg, <laughs> which they were very inspired by Western European culture. And so we have two kind of conflicting ideas on what Russian sound may be. Uh, but this, the, the, the Second Symphony is memorable, it's fun, and it's, in true Tchaikovsky fashion, extremely exciting. Mm -hmm. And a great way to end the program. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've got about uh, 20 seconds left. Anything else you want to add, Chris, just before we finish? I know that this is my third season with the symphony, and we're going to be announcing next season soon. And it's a delight, and I'm so uh, thankful for these young performers to be with us. And, of course, on behalf of the symphony, my hearty congratulations to you both, and we look forward to your performance with us. We do. We look forward to hearing it uh, as listeners anyway on uh, Saturday night, 7 o'clock, Missouri Theater. Be there or be left out. That's right. <laughs> this is 680 KFQ, St. Joseph, Missouri, Fox News, local news next.